here. Right? <laughs> well, this young actor just may someday. You know, most young actors really have to struggle through millions of auditions and screen tests before they land their first role. Well, when this guy showed up, Fox wanted to do Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Well, they wasted no time seeking out our next guest, and here's the reason why. There's only one thing standing between me and the woman I love, and that's 500 of my closest friends. Time to shed a little darkness on the subject. Ladies and gentlemen, this party is officially over. Please exit in an orderly fashion. If this house isn't empty in one minute, I'm calling the police. And Sean Young. <laughs> Trend. Everybody's <laughs> picking on Sean Young. Really? Yeah. Well, someone has to be the butt of the jokes. Otherwise, there is no joke. And so get Sean Young. <laughs> How's your show going? It's going very well. We go back May 15th. Uh-huh. And uh, four thirds. Yes. What you doing? Uh, I'm, I just well, I was down in Daytona Beach uh, doing the MTV Spring Break special that they have. Oh, and, uh, nice work. I know. Yeah, oh, it was, yeah, it was rough. It was rough. You know, all the sun and the beach and everything. It was it was rough, I tell you. Oh, come and on. Then, what were you uh, doing? Well, uh, I, I actually had some interesting experiences down there, which I hadn't quite had before. Uh, I was down there at this at a club called uh, 701 South with uh, some fellas from uh, a group called Nice and Smooth and the Brand New Heavies and stuff like that. And uh, Rappers? Uh, nice and smooth are, yes, uh -huh. exactly. Okay. And brand new heavies are, are like acid jazz. Wow, go from one extreme to the other. Yeah, so we were all, everybody was down there just for the whole MTV thing. Well, they, and they had us judge a wet bikini, con I mean, a wet t-shirt contest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, I've never done anything like this, believe me. I mean, and, and so it was quite an experience. You've never worn a wet t-shirt or you've never done uh, well, it? I, well, I, not only that, but <laughs> they had us bikini. actually doing the pouring of the ice water and everything. So <laughs> it, was, uh, it was quite an experience, I must say. One not to be reckoned with. You're right. So now let's get back. When you're not on vacation, let's go back to the first question. How's the show going, and what is so exciting about this point in your career? Uh, the show's going great. We're going to be making some changes next season. Uh, we, go, we start back in production May 15th. We're going to do six episodes, which are going to take place during the summertime. Mm -hmm. They're going to show like what everybody does during the summer, and, and there's going to be some maturing of the characters and stuff going into their 12th grade year. <laughs> and um, and our, we're going to have a new time slot for six weeks, which I'm not sure exactly when it's going to start, but it, we will be on after The Simpsons and before Beverly Hills 90210. What a for great six slot. weeks. Yeah. yeah, and then we go back to our old time slot after that. Wow. So cannot complain. Are you going to grab a few audience members and take and them, to take the them with slot? us? That's hey, wonderful. guys, come on. Hey. Come on a Sunday night and watch us. Man, so you play this cool, cool kid. Were you at all like that in high school? Were you like the coolest kid in high school? Uh, no, actually, when I was in high school, I kind of strayed away from the whole scene, you mm -hmm. know, the, the whole cliques and everything like that. I. Uh, I was more kind of low-key. I just kind of made my way around. I mean, I knew all kinds of people. I knew guys, you know, all the long hairs, and then, you know, and I knew the punkers, and, you know, I mean, I knew just, like, you know, everybody. So, like, during break or, or uh, uh, lunch or whatever, I just kind of walk around and talk to each, you know, all the different inv individuals and stuff. It makes you more open-minded, you know? I hear that you've been described as a James Dean, a kid who loves danger, who likes the streets, who... Um, Even rumored you were part of a gang in L.A. Oh, Is that are you true? kidding me? See, yeah, that's that was a that was a good one that they that they put in the. Um, it was in a tabloid. Yeah, in the tabloids, uh -huh. of course. So, uh, I, I mean, as far as that goes, it's ridiculous, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, what? I mean, anything in the tabloids is pretty, you know, you can pretty much count on it being rather far fetched. Mm -hmm. So. Um, How do but, you deal with that? Um, well, you know, the thing is, is, I mean, once you've made it in the tabloids, you know you're making it. <laughs> so I don't mind a bit. about you. That's you know, right. I mean, if, if I'm in there, that means, it means I'm doing great in my career. You know, if they want to pick on me, that means I must be doing something right. Yeah. right. You know? So if they want to try and knock me down a couple of, a couple of stairs or something, you know, I might climb up. Where do you get all this confidence to be so young, to have all of that understood? I mean, you have, sometimes you have to be 30, 40, 50 years old and get through 
showbiz a lot before you come up with that kind of security? Um, I don't know. I kind of just I, I kind of just take the time out to look at the whole picture mm -hmm. all the time, and not just part of it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and get like just. I mean, that's basically it, you know. I mean, I, I just take the time out to, to really think about what I'm doing and, and, and how it's going to work in the long run, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm going for the whole nine yards. That's right. Here. Do parents help you out with that a lot? or you're... Oh, yeah. I mean, my mom's very supportive in any, in any decisions I make. You know, if I decided that I didn't want to do it anymore at all, of course, she'd be like, well, you're crazy, but okay. You know, I mean, she, she'd uh, back me up no matter what. Mm -hmm. So you were nominated for an Emmy when you were really young. I mean, when not I that 17. you're so very old now, but... Yeah, when, when I was 17, I, uh, that was, I, I was flabbergasted, you know, I mean, I was, I was th completely thrown off. I, I, had, uh, I hadn't really done too much work before I did I Know My First Name is Steven. I'd done a, mm -hmm. a show called What's On Watching, which was a comedy, Eddie Murphy and a bunch of people. And, um, oh, not bad for one of your first jobs. Yeah, yeah and, and the movie Tucker. I mm -hmm. mean, I had, you know, I had a real small role in it and everything, but, you know, still, and, and uh, it, was, uh, it was the first time I'd ever jumped in anything that serious mm -hmm. and that dramatic. And tell us what that was about. That was about a kid who was kidnapped. Yeah, it was, it was uh, a true story about the, the, uh, the boy, Stephen Stainer, who, mm -hmm. whom passed away the night before the Emmys, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. So oh, uh, everybody was really hoping to win something because we wanted oh. to dedicate it to him and everything. He was hit by a guy who ran a, a stop sign. He Isn't was riding his motorcycle. Wow. Yeah. I remember when I was reading something about when you were playing that role, you were saying that you hoped, if nothing else, that your part in the role might help families might help people how what? yeah well i mean i i did a, another another uh, picture that that uh aired just recently uh, called my son johnny which was with rick schroeder and michelle Lee and stuff mm -hmm. and that was about uh siblings sibling violence violence between brothers and it was another true story it was about how this how the older brother who was played by rick schroeder always abused the younger one and, and the younger one finally you know he snapped one time and he ended up shooting him That's with a the huge family issue gun that you Never hear anything about So, yeah, I mean, that dealt with a lot of things. It, it, it also dealt with the fact, you know, that weapons in the house, if there hadn't been a gun kept in the house, mm -hmm. then that would have never happened. And then it also deals with how, how sibling violence can get completely and totally out of control, you know, without parents even knowing, noticing it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, before we run out of time, let's just go back to your life for just a minute. Yes. We can't let him off the hook without asking him a few personal questions. Go on, oh, Dorothy. No. Oh, no. Shoot him. So we heard you were dating Drew Barrymore. Oh, well, um, uh, lo loosely. You know, I mean, it was... It, we, we loosely dating? Well, I mean, that's what you, you mean, because, you know, with our schedules and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it was, it's really hard. But she's, she's a great person, mm -hmm. and uh, I w went on a few dates with her and stuff like that. She's very cool. We're, we're uh, good friends. Mm -hmm. Do you share so, a lot about showbiz? And uh, not really. You know, you, you try and tend to uh, stray away from that topic uh -huh. as much yeah, as possible. Yeah, it's like talking about work. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you get off work, you don't want to talk about it. And, well, just mm -hmm. before we say goodbye, we know your nickname's Corky. Yes. Why? Well, when I, when I was younger, I, I, my grandma said I was real corker, you know, I was always being, uh, you know, loud you and were. obnoxious, probably. And she said, put a cork in it. Yeah, she was like, put a cork in that No, she didn't say that. She was just like, he's a real cork, and it got around to corky. So I have a ton of names. I have uh, Joseph Charles Nemec as my birth name, the fourth, actually, which I sign when I do drawings and stuff. I always use Joseph Charles Nemec. Mm -hmm. Quite an artist, too. Well, corky, you come back and visit us anytime. Thank you very much. Not if you keep calling him corky. <laughs> Be sure and watch Corky on Park and Lewis Chandler Sunday on Fox. We'll be right back. People bring up. Do you need some clothes for summer fun? Absolutely. The beach and the barbecues are coming up. Well, also coming up is Linda Allard from Ellen Tracy with some summer fashion. But first, singer Maureen McGovern. Maybe she's got a hot tune for the summer.